holding out. The payout crisis was very, uh, was big. It, it, it affected a lot of people. A lot of people were angry about what had happened. Your government fell, was taken over by Barrison National. Is that an issue that still remains uh, important for people in Perak, for voters in particular? Well, thank you so much, BFM. I must say that uh, had the incident of uh, grabbing of power did not take place, I think the realisation would not be as extensive as it is now. But what happened and during those crises, we were not prepared to take over the government. We were only prepared at that time to be an, a strong opposition. But all of a sudden, by the will of God, we took over the government. Therefore, that was, uh, that was something that we had to prepare ourselves there and then. There was no preparation prior to that. So we undertook to form the government uh, by virtue of uh, coming together. The cooperation of all parties we formed with a small majority. Now, however, because there was no determination of the right, the right candidates at that time, we just pick and choose any candidates just off the shelf. Therefore, we didn't realize that among us there were few that could be bought over and defected easily. That was a big, tremendous lesson that, that caused the collapse of the government. But that has caused realization not only in the state of Para, but I think of the whole nation. So that particular incident gave a lot of lesson for Perakians and Malaysians to realize that this particular incident would have not been made known had it happened maybe 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and and it, it was more or less like a phenomena during those period. But now it is happening at this particular time, therefore because of the interaction and engagement of people, therefore they could get the information right, right from the beginning, they could see who, what went wrong and who was the players at that time. So that realization helped to spur the understanding throughout the nation for, for an immediate defense of the rights of the people that have been taken up, taken away. So I would say that in, in, in that particular incident, it has helped the Parakids in particular to realize that their rights, while, while giving the mandate to an alternative government, has been stripped off. So that has been right in the hearts of Parakid, mostly to wait for an opportune time for them to re given the mandate again for Ah, so you believe that uh, this time round that uh, Perakians will vote for a Pakatan government? Well, I would have thought so because immediately when the when when I took this case under co warranto in the High Court of KL, immediately when the decision was favorable to me, I immediately went to see the ruler, the, the Sultan at that time, to seek for the resolution because I was renominated to be the, the rightful Menteri Besar. So I used that uh, judgment by the court to seek audience and then to get the permission so that the consent will be given to dissolve. Now, because that was refused, therefore the Perakians felt that it is unjust, therefore they have been so patiently waiting for, like, for the next coming four years, therefore I believe this coming election is, is actually a realization of that four years, four and a half years of patience. So they would like to translate that into what it should be, which by right it should have been done immediately after the grabbing of power because the High Court decided to be favorable to me on my side. But then they will refuse of that right, therefore this is the most, best opportunity time for them to realize it back. On the side of the Barrison National, uh, the administration led by um, Dr. Samri, do you think that he's been able to somehow persuade uh, people, the people of Pera that his administration actually can serve them well? Has it, in your estimation, been a reasonably good administration? Well, technically, what, whatever has been done, that he had done over the last four and a half years, I think that has been going on already according to some, some uh, procedures. But principally speaking, uh, his position as the Chief Minister has been uh, regarded by most educated Parakians as illegitimate. So on that count, whatever he does for a good thing is still illeg illegitimate. So that illegitimacy on him gave that understanding that he is not doing the right thing. So he has never got that 100% support from Perkin. People looked him, looked as if that he, he shouldn't be there, but he was forced to be there. Therefore, he felt himself very misplaced, so much so that he had to, he had to flood the whole state with placards, banners and buntings to inform the public that I am the rightful Mitribusa. He has actually flooded the whole state with his pictures, so that I am the rightful Mitribusa, I am the rightful Mitribusa, which is not necessarily had it been on a legitimate basis. So on that count, we believe that whatever procedures on the government administration has been doing it okay, that's been going on. 
uh, approvals and rejection, whatever. But principally, your position has been there has been questioned by the Prakian. Now, this illegitimacy happened because of the understanding of the Prakians on, on the law, the openness of them. So, had it been happening for the last 20 years, it may not have erupted that understanding. But because it is happening now, people can realize that his being there is not according to the constitution. Right, so legitimacy is uh, still a crucial issue for, for voters in the state of Pera. But beyond the question of legitimacy, what are the other things that uh, the voter in Pera is looking at? I mean, the issues of uh, programs, of policies, of sp concerns specific to the, the state of Pera. Could you just kind of right. lay out what, some of what, those? What, what the Perakians uh, need is for them to have quick deliveries without any tinge and element of racial discrimination, any tinge and element of uh, cronism. So that has been our attention when we first grabbed, when we first took over the power. We realized that the Perakians have been suffering for many umpteen years for them to get quick approval for small property to be changed in hands or alienation or whatever. Therefore, we answered that. So their hues and cries over the last many years were being answered quickly by us on land matters and also on approvals. So we identified those policies without any element of racial discrimination, uh, particularly racial discrimination. That was a no-no to Pakatan Raya government. So we were respected over the last uh, so John period of 11 months, primarily because we did not have that culture in our government. So we organize uh, a lot of business as well as economical transaction with any potential Perakians who have got their interests parked outside Para. They were wooed to come back. We created a lot of uh, pool factors so that those Perakians who wanted to come back to this state, they, they were being given the attention and we did that. Approvals by external foreign domestic uh, sources were quickly attended to. So this spread of word of mouth saying that they do not have to go through through red tapes and bureaucracy. Those were the things that we actually handled that gave us the impetus that this is a respected government. So we had this alternative for them to compare between 50 over years of BN rule and 11 short months of Pakatan Raya rule. In terms of uh, the assembly, when you have an assembly that's fairly evenly divided, uh, does, is that, does it make for good politics? Does it make for better governance? Is the party that actually controls the administration more likely to uh, be uh, uh, transparent? Is it more likely to be cautious about doing anything that's underhanded or corrupt? Is it good for, for politics in the state of Pera to have a strong opposition, whether it's BN or Pakatan? Well, I think the, the existence of strong opposition is actually the characteristics of a good democratic uh, government, good democratic principle, and good democratic behavior. So Pera, had it been on the right democratic move, the fact that we have good opposition, that would enhance in all aspects for the good betterment of the state. So I would have thought that for the first time in the Pera history, they could see that they, they, have, they have the opportunity for an option. So we provided that option. So I believe in this coming election, that basically 11 months can give them that alternative. Because they could see compared to four, four other Pakatan states, which has been uh, already been governed for the last five years, they would have thought that Pera would just complement all those things. And this is a great opportunity for them to make that choice. Who in the state of uh, Pera does not support uh, the Pakatan Rakyat as a coalition? And if they don't support it, what is it that they're concerned about? Why is it that your message is not reaching out to okay. those people? Well, the groups that are not supporting us, uh, we're not blaming them, primarily because they do not have any access to information which is updated on, on why we were there, what we did over the last 11 months. So those are the, the downtrodden groups which are in far remote villages or even those settlers. Kapera have got some areas which have settlers uh, ground. So those are the group of people that have not been giving uh, support primarily because they were not being briefed and updated in their information. However, uh, apart from that, I think those within the vicinity in the suburban, urban areas, I think they are likely to be supporters of Pakatan Rakyat. Yeah. Because they are the ones that are going to get the direct benefit from our rule. Uh, those, the reason why they are not giving support to us because of their only basis of information is one-sided. Now, the reason why we couldn't actually get across to them 
One instance, because the management of those settlers restricted us from coming in. Yeah. So that's one, one, one big problem. The other big problem is because, uh, because we did not have a, a group that could really enhance and disseminate those information. Until such time now that we're beginning to develop that force, uh, after we mix together DAP, Pakatan, Kadalan and PAS, uh, those very strengths we combine together that we have access to these people now, which initially we didn't enjoy. So I believe with the four and a half months, four and a half years of intense campaigning, we are able to get across, disseminate our information to them. Now, you led a very interesting coalition. You came from actually one of the, the smallest of the three parties in the Pakatan Riot Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, your leadership was, uh, was much uh, celebrated. Uh, you know, you came from a small, smallest party, but you had a certain charisma. Is that likely, if Pakatan takes over in, after this general election, are you likely to be the, uh, the, the Mantri Bissa and uh, are we going to see the same sh shape in the coalition? Well, generally speaking, within Pakatan Raya, there, that has been the mode. The mode for me to recontinue really back what I have, I have uh, done uh, but uh, was short-lived. But in general, I think the Parakians would also like me to continue on. But there again, I must uh, justify that it depends on my position as an outcome of the election. So. Whether or not I would be uh, most uh, the rightful choice to be the chief minister, that entirely depends on the ruler, uh, on his pleasure. He can pick any. The only thing is that the Parak constitution specifies that the chief minister must be a Malay and he must be a Muslim. So on that particular count, as a reason why, even though we were the smallest number of uh, assembly men, uh, however, because DAP and Kaadilan consented to a candidate from PAS, that was, that was the reason why uh, I was actually su suggested and proposed to be the, the, the Chief Minister. Now, in the eyes of the Parakian, uh, they would still believe that the Chief Minister must be a Malay. Okay? That in general has been accepted by each community. Now, so on that count, it depends whether or not the Malay comes from Kaadilan or the AP or PAS. So it's just that in this coming election, the AP has consented to Pakatan Rakyat that they will not be fielding any Malay candidate because of certain political overtones and that we have to protect that uh, so that it will not be spin off. Uh, thirdly, uh, the Perak Sultan uh, has also a, a history whereby there has been a case where, uh, where certain things are not being followed. So on that count, it may have effect on the decision to choose the rightful Mujibasa. Had it been a decision by the people to, to give the mandate back to Pakatan Rakyat, then I think we have to consider all those factors to nominate the rightful Chief Minister at this time. But as far as Pakatan Rakyat is concerned, they have most, more, more or less proposed me. So I have got to be working very hard to make sure that victory is, is, is within our, our reach. Now, the Pakatan Riot is actually a formation that comes post the 2008 general election. Uh -huh. It is it has since grown uh, in terms of trying to bring together the three groups, some level of policy coherence. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pakatan has something called the Common Policy Platform, yeah. which is their agenda for administration, okay. which is a, a kind of minimal program, right? Uh, do Perakians uh, believe that the, the Pakatan can work as a coalition, that it can iron out whatever seemingly contradictory policies or orientations that the different parties have, especially uh, tensions or differences between DAP and PAS ideologically? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think Perakians accept that the Pakatan government is a workable um, coalition? Well, I believe in general they have seen our performance in 11 months. Uh, there has been very minimal bickerings among ourselves. They have more or less accepted that there were differences between our, ourselves, but we managed to set aside those differences and we were harping on what, on the common strength that we had. And that has put us together to combine our forces and strength to, to create a government that was workable. Now the reason why I say that because uh, we were guided by common policy framework based on five principles. Number one is the principles of transparency which we actually uh, put ourselves in it. And then we have accountability. And then we have the principles of, of, um, of openness, you know, open tender and the rest. And we have also integrity and then uh, also uh, welfare. So those very policies built us together to create and provide uh, deliveries based on those. And I think 
they have the confidence level that that was a workable government based on the on the policies that we have just drafted and we practice based on it. I wanted to ask you to kind of focus for the last question about the question of welfare. I think a lot of Malaysians now, we, we're really uh, understanding that, you know, many Malaysians uh, have been earning very uh, little. Um, the minimum wage policy is only just kicking in. We've mm -hmm. had strikes by workers in proton okay. companies because of the difficulties of actually implementing the minimum wage. Right. Is that something that the Pakatan government is going to be focusing on? Workers' rights and the ability to get Malaysians at a level of uh, you know um, income that will make it kind of okay. uh, kind of make their livelihoods easier. Right. That has been spelled out very clearly inside our common policy framework, as well as the recent manifesto which we just telecasted, and also it was it was actually provided so in the Buku Jinga. But as far as state government is concerned, for Perak per se, we were saying that okay, uh, we wanted to give full attention to that, but it depends on the federal uh, how we actually practice it. But what is in dire need by the Perakian at that time, we felt that there were umpteen number of Perakians sitting on state land without having official land titles. Now, for the first time in Perak history, any Perakian, whether they are Chinese, Malay, or Asli Indians, who were poor, sitting on government land, therefore it is incumbent upon we as Pakatara government to provide them with a, a piece of land with their own titles for them to build a home. That was our priority, and we did that to 134 new villages, sitting on those land for the last 80 years without any titles. So for the first time, we approved it. In Kampung Tesusun, arranged villages, 349 numbers, comprising 102,000 titles. We approved them as well, freehold. Now, those were the ones that they were in need at that time. So I believe compared to, uh, compared to minimum wages, because it has not been done before, and there's got many controversies as well. And that has been, it's just waiting time for that to take place. So we did not give attention to that. But we still will continue our old policies that were giving benefit to the people, particularly on land matters, we'll continue that. Lastly, just one last question. Do those uh, new villagers and the people who live in those Kampung Tazusot, are they your vote bank? Will they be grateful for the titles that they were given? Do they, will they remember what the Pakatan riot government well, did? Well, I would have said that not only those uh, mixed arranged villagers and new villagers, they were quite uh, grateful to us because they have been crying for that particular needs and wants over many, many years. And we fulfilled that. We also provide land for educational purposes to all the private schools, whether they are Chinese secondary private schools or Sekolah Agama Rakyat, we provided 1,000 hectares of land for them to culture, to fertilize, to cultivate, so they can get some products out of it. So those were what we did. So we believe that they will, they will continue their thankfulness and the gratefulness to us because we attended to their real needs and want at that time. Do you have a final message for the voters of Pera? Now, thank you so much. I like this question very much because I'm going to take this golden opportunity for me to humbly request to all Perakians which are working outside Para, but you have your, your love to this state, kindly please, please do the, the needy, come back to this beloved state and cast your votes during nomination day so that we'll bring back Pakatan Raya government and we can put back Para in where it should be uh, as a state where we can call it a home for the Perakian. So I humbly request again for them to come back to this state and cast your vote so that uh, we can realize a new government and a new opportunities for this beloved state. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.